Welcome to Sharing the Middle, where recovering perfectionists, overachievers, and anyone in the middle of a struggle come together to learn to embrace the messy middles of life. I'm Lacey, your friend in the middle, whose claim to fame this week is making dinner not one, but two nights this week. It's a great mini episode today with a reading from the middle about self-care, advice from the middle about motherhood, and we'll be ending with some Lacey loves. Real quick, I do want to make sure that you heard about my upcoming Women Who Made Me Challenge. For each week in March, Women's History Month, I am challenging you to share a woman who made you. Often we celebrate famous women and not necessarily the women in the middle who made us who we are. Additionally, for the month of March, you're going to hear from the women who made me on this podcast. I can't wait for you to hear them because they're amazing. Head to themiddle.com backslash women who made me for more info and to sign up. Let's jump on in. Is self-care important? Spoiler alert, yes, it is. I almost hate talking and writing about self-care because of how it's been turned into a gimmick. It has become a quick note of something that you should do to survive a difficult phase or something an employer tells employees to do without giving them the actual like tools and abilities to do it. There's also a chance someone is trying to sell you something, which I am totally guilty here, but I'm not trying to sell you like a bath bomb, so it feels a little different. I am trying to sell you support from the middle, to be clear, but only if you want it and only if you believe it would be helpful. I didn't truly understand the importance of self-care until recently. You see, what happens when you don't take care of yourself? You get worn down, right? When you don't have the reserve to take the wearing down, you cannot afford to do what you need. My hope for you is that you won't get to that point of no reserves left and can be proactive. All right, so what the heck am I even talking about? What is self-care? So if I'm telling you self-care isn't those gimmicky things, then what is it? The reality is self-care is anything that you do intentionally to take care of yourself. We become so separated from ourselves and what we require that we no longer recognize what we need to take care of ourselves. We prioritize so many other things over our well-being. To be clear, I'm not telling you that you need to eat a specific diet, do a certain amount of working out, or live a certain way. I don't know you, and I don't know what you need. I am telling you to look at yourself and figure out what the heck is going on in there. Are you tired? Maybe that means you have to sleep. Are you hungry? Perhaps you have to eat. Are you starting to have a shorter fuse? Do you need to take a break? You are a being with actual needs. You're allowed to take care of them. Willpower to overcome some things all the time is self-sabotage. And it's not impressive. I think sometimes self-control or will have become judgmental terms that are detrimental to our self-care. And as usual, the right amount is probably in the middle. What does self-care look like? It really depends on your priorities and what you require. My friend Alex was telling us last week that she feels better when she can go out into nature and walk. I think this is wonderful. This would almost certainly knock me out. For his birthday last year, I suggested my husband take a night in a hotel by himself because I loved it the time that I did it. He was not into it. He wanted to be in our house. That was more rejuvenating for him. So basically, I can't tell you what your self-care is. That's work you have to do on your own. I do have a handy little guide for you to potentially come up with something. Listen to your body and your mind without judgment, and you will probably come up with what you need rather quickly. Man, I'm really self-promoting in this one, aren't I? I'm trying not to feel icky about it. There's another one coming. Sorry. What is stopping you? In my opinion, the barriers to taking care of yourself are more important than your self-care strategies. In Support from the Middle, I have a whole worksheet dedicated to identifying your self-care barriers. Figuring out what's in your way may be a bit more enlightening than just making yourself a list of what you should do. These barriers may be in or out of our control. These barriers may be things that we don't like about ourselves or our situation. 
These barriers may be upsetting. That is a basket of something I really encourage you to explore with a qualified professional, of which I need to be clear, is not me. I will give myself up as an example. I often would not allow myself to take a break because I should be able to do something for a certain amount of time. So this should was my barrier to an act of self-care. I used it over and over and over again, and it did not serve me. I had to figure out why I kept using this should to beat myself up and deprive myself. Spoiler alert, there was no good reason. It was just internalized stuff from other people. Furthermore, I now view rest as something morally neutral that my body needs, more so now than ever. So self-care is essential. Hopefully, it is clear that you are the one that needs to determine it. Today's episode of Sharing the Middle is brought to you by Nextdoor Goddess Handcrafted Jewelry. If you've been a listener of Sharing the Middle, you know that I love this Byron jewelry that's inspired by the Mediterranean coast. It helps you embrace and celebrate your beauty. Each element is sourced from a small business, handcrafted in small batches, and only made while the creator is in their best mood. Vicki is one of my favorite people in the world, and she's their creative director, so you know, well, I know, that you will be receiving pieces that are not only beautiful, but will make you feel amazing, too. I literally just put on my Tina in the Sun Golden Sunstone hoop earrings. I needed a little pick-me-up and I wanted to add a little sunshine in my life and I feel great. Head to nextdoorgoddess.com and get 10% off your first purchase by signing up for the newsletter with free shipping on all domestic orders. Release your inner goddess today. Now let's get into our advice from the middle. Here is our letter. I've been a mother for a few years now and I feel like I've lost my sense of self in the process. Before becoming a mother, I had a strong sense of who I was and what I wanted from life. Now, I feel like my entire identity has revolved around being a mother, and I don't know how to find myself again. I'm constantly putting the needs of my children first and neglecting my own needs and desires. I miss my old hobbies, career, and even just spending time with friends, but I don't know how to balance it all and still be the best mother I can be. I feel like I'm stuck in this rut, and I don't know how to break free. Can you offer any advice on how to discover oneself while still being a great mother? Whew. This is a tough one. This is a tough one uh, for a lot of reasons. But before I even try to give advice, I just want to say I totally understand where this is coming from. Before I was a mother, I was so afraid of losing myself. You know, I looked around and I had all these amazing mothers around me and that is what I thought of them primarily as. So to me, that was like a requirement. Honestly, I I shared that with my husband and he, that fear, and he being the amazing person he is, he was like, well, we won't let that happen, period. Like he, he was my partner in that. So I have not faced this as much as I thought I was going to. I think it's hard for any mom to not face this, but because I had that mindset going in and because my husband was so supportive. So that's kind of step one of you are allowed to have this mindset. You are allowed to be your own person. You don't have to give everything to your this motherhood ideal to be a great mom. And so because of that, I'm going to kind of challenge you of what it means to be a great mom. Really think about what does it mean to be a good mother? Because those are the things you need to focus on, not necessarily what I like to joke as the Pinterest parts of motherhood. I actually recently wrote a piece that I talk about how my view of motherhood has had to change in my illness. And I can still be a great mom, even though I cannot be the mom that runs around with her kids anymore. And that was something hard for me to under, to accept and understand, but it is true. That's kind of step one, in my opinion, is you need to really define what being a great mother is. Get rid of all the other junk that does not matter as part of that. You don't have to be a certain mother in a certain way. I mean, yes, you have to meet your children's emotional uh, needs and all these different things, but you don't have to do it in 
one way. We're gonna, you're gonna hear from my friend Alex next month in The Women Who Made Me, and she, I think, is one of my role models in this, of being a mother, but still completely herself. She's been a mother the entire time that I have known her, but that is not the first thing that I think about when I think about Alex. So it's not that I think of her that way because I knew her before she was a mom, no. I just know her because she has made that a priority. Some people are better at this than others. I know I will probably ask her about this on the podcast. I'm not going to talk about it. But um, I know for me, I have to speak up when I need something. I send my kids to daycare, one, because I can't really take care of them full time by myself right now. But before that, because I knew I would be a better mom if I went to work. So that was my choice in what I did. If that's not for you, great. And then the other part of this, I'm going to point you back to my essay from the middle. What do you need to take care of yourself? Because part of taking care of yourself is being able to be who you are. So I know that was a long answer, but it's a couple steps. It's really looking at how you're defining what a great mother is and then looking at how you can leverage what is around you to bring yourself to the forefront again, because you do deserve to be a whole person inside and outside of being mother, a mother. Thanks for writing in. All right. In our last segment today, we're going to talk through my lacy loves for the week. My loves this week are going to be real corny, so stick with me. First and foremost, I posted about this on uh, my social media about how wonderful my husband was. And in the light of Valentine's Day, it's just so on my mind how a lot of times when we think of love and romance, we think of romance and love as it looks at flowers and chocolates and big gestures and all that. And I find the most romantic things to be the little things that show that someone thought about you and showed up for you. Um, And my husband did that all day on Valentine's Day. So just a friendly reminder that love can look like a lot of different things and that real love is showing up for the people that uh, you you do love. So that is something that I love. I love love. (laughs) I do love romance books. I think I've told you all that before, but this is a very different type of thing. Even in my romance books, I do prefer a more grounded... um, showing that you understand someone love. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the other thing I want to tell you about is something that I hope you already know, and that's your local library. So a few weeks ago, I talked about Audible, and I love Audible. Don't get me wrong. Support from the middle has on Audible right now for you to be able to go and purchase. But also, Your local library has so many digital options that you never even have to physically go into the library to be able to use their services. I think often we discount the amazing amounts of free information and books and knowledge that the library has to offer. And I just wanna make sure that you're not forgetting about your local library. I know at my library, we have multiple apps to be able to borrow. My actual favorite one is not Libby, which I think is the one most people know about. It's called Hoopla. And I really like it because basically all of the books are there. And if they have it, you can borrow it and you get a certain amount of borrows per month. And it's generous. Although your girl has hit the maximum before. Not recently, but I don't know before. So yeah, so if you are looking for a specific book, definitely make sure that you have your library as part of your process. Honestly, too, that's where I go when I'm just, I need to, I'm like, I would like to listen to something. I don't have anything specific in mind. I go and I just kind of comb through some of the different offerings and and borrow from there. Two uh, free things for you in Lacey Loves this week, Uh, love uh, and, and your library. That's it from um, Sharing the Middle today. Thanks so much for joining me. As usual, I've loved Sharing the Middle with you. I hope you continue our conversation, uh, whether it's on social media, email, wherever. I want this to be a two-way conversation. Have a great day. 
As usual, thank you for sharing The Middle with me today. Remember to check out my writings at themiddle.com. That's the M-D-D-L.com. While you're there, you can sign up for the weekly newsletter to get a little bit more middle in your inbox each week. I am a one-woman show, so any bit of support means the world to me. I want The Middle to be as accessible as possible, so I have several ways for you to support. You can shop The Middle with some merch or my books, the Lacey Loves affiliate links and recommended products, Patreon for additional community and content, and I also just have a tip jar if you'd like to leave a tip. If you like today's show, also make sure to subscribe at your favorite podcatcher, share with a friend, and maybe even leave a five-star review. Thanks so much to Lemon Music Studio for our theme music. It is literally called Sunshine, and that is certainly how it feels to me. Can't wait to see you in the middle again. Thanks for sharing the middle with me. As always, I hope you've been able to see a little bit of yourself in the story we shared today. Don't forget to follow, share, rate, review, and follow me on social media at Lacey Shares. You can always check out the Joyful Support Movement at JoyfulSupportMovement.com and see all of the amazing goodness we have there, like No Shame in the Home Game, Pops of Joy, courses, resources, and of course, the Joyful Support Village. All right, now go out there and spread some joy. Mm -hmm.